Oh, here we go. We're recording. Come on, guys. So now, estimation. So we're gonna we're gonna keep we're gonna continue our look at some review topics that are gonna be important to you in this number section. Now, again, most of this material is not going to be new. That's not a bad thing. Do you want to take it an, an assessment where you get four credits for doing something that you're very comfortable doing and happy? Yes. <laughs> well then, let's move on and do it, okay? Because this is it. All right, so what we're going to do is talk today is talk about estimations. Sometimes it's not convenient to work with the numbers as they're given. Sometimes you want to decide, you want to make an estimate. And sometimes you have to. Let's say I want you to measure this, the length of this room. Do you have a measuring tape on you, anybody? No. Okay, no. But you could, you could use a ruler, but that'd be a pain. But you could kind of estimate it, right? Okay. Maybe not very accurately, but you could do it. So sometimes estimations are used instead of the, instead of the true numbers. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at estimation. All right? So, so why are they showing a sundial, you think? They measure time, but you think it's an a how accurate do you think it is? It's really an estimate of what the real time is. Because is the sun always in the same spot all the time? Uh, every part, part of the year? No. So it's just an estimate. So sometimes you need to figure out a rough idea of what an answer is. And so that makes you want to, so you would estimate. You would get an estimate. Rounding the numbers makes it easier to estimate. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're rounding accurately, but you want to be smart about it. So you might not want to follow the exact rounding rules. You want to round to something that are called sympathetic numbers. Okay? Now, they don't give you that phrase here, but sympathetic numbers. If somebody's sympathetic, that means they understand, they make it easier for you, right? Well, some numbers are easier than others. For example, numbers that end in zero, easier to work with than numbers that end in three, yeah? yeah. Do you agree? Five, numbers that end in five are a little bit easier. Okay. So, you, so we're not going to be obeying the, strictly obeying the rounding rules here, but, we're gonna think, but you can't change the value of the numbers so much. So if you look at this multiplication problem, they have these two decimals multiplied together, and they show you what it's going to be. But then they rounded them. Now notice, again, they didn't follow the rounding rules because that would have been 284 times 2.1. doesn't really help you. So what happened is, they just estimated the numbers. So it's a little bit different than rounding. And so they did 280 times two, which most of us could do in our head. Yeah? Right? Or at least make it a lot easier. Now, look at the difference between the two numbers. 589.88 or 560. Get a pretty big difference there, right? But it's close enough in some circumstances. Now, are you always gonna be able to estimate? No, but in certain circumstances, it's okay. And when you're estimating, usually round to either one or two significant figures, right? So you want to make it as small as you can with as many zeros as you can and make the numbers as sympathetic as you can get them. So here, they took the 241 and they rounded to two significant figures, right? That means there are two digits and everything else becomes what? zeros and so everything after that if you look at if you look at what's happening here if we take so the two digits are the two four so everything else becomes zeros but what about the zeros after the decimal point who cares right we don't need them right so 240 now we didn't need that zero because it's to the left of the decimal point it's in the ones column right so it's very important to have it and then this one they just rounded to eight Okay, 24 divided by eight, you've heard of that one before, haven't you? 24 divided by eight is just simply three, three but it's, got, it's really 240, so it's not gonna be three, but 30. 30. It's one reason why we love making things with zeros, right? <laughs> okay, so could I have rounded that 7.98 to a seven? Yeah, to one significant digit if I wanted to, if it made it more convenient. So say that the top number had been 210, 
I wouldn't want to turn that into, a, into an eight. I'd want to turn it into a seven. Now, that's going to push it. It's going to, it's going to really decrease the accuracy of what you're doing. But again, remember, you're talking only about getting an estimate, right? Now, there are lots of reasons why you might want to have an estimate, and we're going to explore some of those. Nope, that's your homework. I'm not doing that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, well, it's in, the, it's in the section where we're going to do the applied problems. So, you, so, just make an estimate. Now, does it give you the right answer? This one was pretty close, wasn't it? We got 30 in our estimate, and it's 30.19, blah, 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 blah. So, we are really close. Okay? But, when you look at the original numbers that we started uh, with, we didn't round them that much, did we? 241 became 240. 7.9 became 8. It's almost 8 anyway, right? As a matter of fact, if you followed your standard rounding rules, to, if you were rounding that 7, you'd get 8. Okay? All right, so, did everyone see how to make an estimate? Two significant figures or one when you're doing an estimate? So, well, either or, right? If it's a big number, you're going to round it to how many significant digits? Two. If it's a small number, you're going to round it to one. Everybody handle that? Okay, so... Well, follow the rules because otherwise your, your numbers won't fit, won't fit with theirs. Sounds good? Okay. Then that's all there is about estimation. <laughs> I think, let me see. I think there was some, est there we go. Estimation and applied problems. I thought there's some more there. So let's go. So now we're going to talk about different situations where you might estimate. So let's look at an example at different situations where you might use an estimate. So Phoebe goes for a 21.5 kilometer run most mornings. She went running on 338 days last year. Estimate her total distance. Well, if she runs so much per day, then you're just gonna take the amount she runs times what? The number of days, right? And we could do 21.5 times 338 if we had a calculator, but uh, do you always have a calculator handy? Yes. <laughs> some of you, yes, some of you know. But we could ask, but this case, they give us permission to estimate. And so look at what they've done. They've taken the 21.5 and turned it into 20, and then they take the 338 and round it to 340. Now, really, think about the 20 as just being a 2, and what's going to happen to your answer? You add, a, add the 0 in later, okay? So what's, what do you think 2 times 340? Do you think you could do that pretty easily? Yeah, if you had a piece of paper, you could probably do that pretty closely. And then that would give you 680, and then put, and you just plap the zero at the end. Yes? Um, why did they round the 21.5 to 20? Because they wanted a friendly, sympathetic number. Um, zero. Awesome. They wanted zero. Yeah, if you can get a zero at the end, it's your friend. So either one significant digit or two big numbers. If you have three or more digits, round, do use two significant figures. If it's two or, if it's two or one or two digits in the ones column or tens column, Round it to one digit, one significant so are digit. Sympathetic numbers like zero, like whole, Things two is easy to divide. Any number that's easy to divide, multiply with, or add together. So yeah, definitely whole numbers, never de never decimals. Sympathetic or friendly numbers. Okay. So and again, so round it to something easy to work with. So the general rule is, if it's a smaller number, twenties. 30s, 90s, less than 100. If it's less than 100, round it to one significant digit. If it's bigger than 100, round it to, or if it's 100 or bigger, um, uh, some, you might round it to two. Well, 100, I would round to 100 if you had to, but you see what I'm saying, okay? So she went about 6,800 kilometers. Here's something I wanna point out to you, and it's really important. Do you see this symbol they're using? Is that an equal symbol? No. That's the symbol for approximately or about. Do y'all have another word for it here sometimes? Approximate. Okay. So approximately or about. So would it be okay that I, if I did this? No. Absolutely not. This is completely wrong because this is an estimate. It's got to be the right symbol. So if you do an estimate, don't dare write an equal symbol. Okay? Good deal. All right.
Simon works full time at a diner. Suppose that he works, that he earns, oh, this is one of your homework problems, but we can do this anyway. Suppose he, and that he earns 15.25 an hour and he works for 8.5 hours a day. Estimate how much he makes in a day. What might you round those to? 15 times nine? 15 times nine wouldn't be too bad, right? You could do that pretty easily. Yeah? I would be afraid to, roll, to, to take that to one significant digit and turn it into a 10 because then you're really going to get a number that's very, very far off, right? So I would round that to two significant digits, the first one, and that one to one significant digit. So 15 times 9. All right? Still easier. Now, did we say it's going to make it perfect? No. <laughs> but it's still easier than if you did the whole thing. I don't know why these little boxes keep showing up on my screen there. All right, so you think you can do some of these? Just do some, some simple estimations, okay? Oops. All right, good deal. So you're gonna have some problems on those. I've already actually assigned that, okay? Standard form, don't worry about standard form. If you see it on there, do not click on it yourself. That's uh, standard form and sci is scientific notation. Um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna be needing that for right now. But you are going to need some fraction stuff. Aren't you excited? There we go, this is what we're doing. All right, now this is the number section of your, remember, remember this test is going to be the number section. So you can use your calculator to do these conversions. That's perfectly fine. You can do these calculator to do the rest of it. Make sure you're a bit careful though. If you put in an exact number when it wants an estimation, it's wrong, right? So don't be too exact. Don't be too, too carried away, okay? All right. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to convert num between fractions, decimals, and percents, right? Okay. Hold on a second. All right, so here we go. So we need to be able to write things in, in different ways. So you have fractions, you have decimals, and you have percentages. And you're going to convert between the three. Right? So we're going to look at how to do that. So first of all, in order to, to take a fraction from a decimal, to, all you have to do is perform the division. And again, don't have to worry about doing the division on paper or in your head because... Got your calculator. Unless it says describe it or show how you did it, right? Then you might want to write it out. But, okay, so write out the pieces at the very least. Read the directions carefully and ask and what it's asking you to do, okay? So, say for example, we have the fraction 3 fourths. Most of you already know that 3 fourths equals what is a decimal? 0 0.75, right? Okay? But if you didn't, just take three, and what does the fraction bar always mean, no matter what? Divide. And if you look at the fraction bar, you seen this division symbol before? What does it look like? It looks like a fraction. That's because that's where it came from. It actually, this was how division was always written before, and somebody decided when everybody had to start learning mass that we needed a, a different symbol, an easier symbol for it because people freak out at fractions. And so this thing was created. But look at it. It's just the fraction bar with, two, with dots instead of numbers. So a fraction bar in your brain from now on, this point forward, I stab myself with the eye, should always indicate what operation? Division. Okay? Because literally the division symbol was created from a fraction bar. Okay? Okay. So anytime you see a fraction bar, that means divide. So just divide. And it tells you, and then you I can get your decimal. Good? Okay. Did y'all know that about the division symbol? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> People have been so mean to you. What's that about? Okay, here we go. So four over seven. How can I convert four over seven to a fraction? Simply carry out the... Division. And what is it? Four divided by seven. Get them in the right order. It's always the numerator, the top number, divided by the bottom, right? Get them in the right order. So that gives you a big, long decimal. 
And then they simplify that. And then they say that is as a decimal is 0 0.57. And notice the little clarifier. What? If you round something, if they don't tell you to round it to do two decimal places and don't do it, but if you do do it, no, it's not always wrong. Just tell us you did it. Come on. You all have mothers. Have you ever done something bad? No, probably never. Have you ever done something bad and then realized, you know what? If I go tell mom, I'm going to get into less trouble than if she finds out on her own. Yes. You always get into less trouble if you tell on yourself if you do something, right? And so that's what's happening here. I'm telling on myself. I rounded it to two decimal places. Yes, yes. In, in, in normal circumstances, you just wouldn't round though, right? But if you do round, explain that you did. But in the exams, you have to say, like, I rounded it. Yeah, if you did. But I wouldn't round. I just wouldn't round. And it's only if they don't so, No, but if they tell you to round to two decimal places, you don't have to tell them you did, yeah, but right? Don't. But if they don't, and you, yeah, just leave it. Just leave it. But if you do and you tell them, they'll be okay. The internal grader might be. External might not be. Right? But you're going to be a lot less trouble with the external if you do tell, tell them what you did. Okay? I, w I just wouldn't round unless they let, tell you you can. But if you do, that's... So you see, they didn't tell us to, but they, but they told on themselves. Let them... All right? So you see the difference. All right. Let's look at another. All right. Nope. That's your homework. Y'all going to do those yourself. When is it due? The homework? But when you get it done, okay. <laughs> Hold on a minute. No, come on. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get through these. Let's get through the lessons. Make sure we get through this part, and then we'll talk about that. All right. Now, all we need to do to convert a decimal to a percentage is multiply by one hundred percent. Now, you may have learned this instead of multiply by one hundred percent as simply move the decimal and add the de and add the percent symbol. And that's fine too, but it doesn't work on fractions. If you take a fraction and put it in your calculator, boom, you now have a decimal. I mean, you now have a percent without going through the middle step. Okay? So. If you want to you do it as move the decimal, 0 0.75, because multiplying by 100% is simply going to move the decimal two places to the right, yeah? yeah? And that's another thing about moving the decimal. How many times do you forget which direction to go? Every single time. Yeah, almost every single time. Me too. I do it a lot. So I would, if I were you, okay? Now, I, I don't know you guys that well, so... You may be perfectly happy moving the decimal and you always move it in the right direction and you're perfect with that. That's fine. I would multiply times 100%. Okay? Just, just saying. But it's you. You do what you want to. This, again, are review sessions, hopefully, so it doesn't matter. This always works, though. Okay? So, so like, put, put, get your calculators out and put... Three divided by four. Three divided by four. And then you, and you're going to have to hit equals probably or, or enter. Yeah. Times 100%. Do you just do times 100? Times 100%. There's a percent button. I see. I see an all Why does it look like that? What did it give you when you did that? Sorry? Okay, did you put 100 times 100%? Okay, so it's just returning it as a decimal? Okay, all right. So, all right, so you might, mm, it's on there, so I, I don't know. Remember, I don't do your Cassias, I always did Texas Instruments, so. 0.75? Okay, so it won't read it as a percent. All right, 
Then, all right, then we're just going to, then, like, then you're, you're just stuck with the decimal, stuck with moving the decimal then. So, you know, you might look online and see if there's a tutorial to show you. And if you can do it with a calculator, it's perfectly fine. Yes. Yeah, it comes up Yeah, and then just add the percent symbol at the end. You can do that. Now, so multiply it by 100, just add the percent symbol at the end. It's perfectly fine. All right? It's just not going to give it, run it, turn it to you as a percent. Just a, dec just a no, whole number. So 0 0.14 times 100%, 14.5%. So multiply by 100, okay? Just don't forget to add that percent symbol. If you're just multiplying by 100, don't forget to add that percent symbol, okay? Otherwise, you're just going to get some funky number and, they're gonna, and you're not going to know why. Okay, here we go. Now... I don't know if they're going to give you any fraction, any fractions, any where you're going to go the other way. Let me look. So convert to decimal to percent. Percentages to decimals. Do I need to do that? Changing fractions to percents. Nah, just take the fraction times 100. Poof, done. Uh, finding the percentage or fraction of an amount. Okay. So I'll I'll assign you homework. This one is just going to have that one little section. All you have to do is do times 100. You'll be fine. Okay. All right. No, just, just, take, just take the fraction times 100, and that's the number of percent. There's no reason to do the middle step, is what I'm saying. Okay? Otherwise, you have to change the fraction to a decimal, then the decimal to a percent. But you can just take the fraction times 100. Done. Because your calculator is going to do the division when you enter the fraction, right? Okay. All right. So you cannot multiply with a percent. You must change it to a decimal. Now, I've told you that, but your calculator is perfectly happy multiplying with a percent if you know how to, if you know how to use the keystrokes. Okay? Well, if you know how to do it, you don't have to change it. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you can use your calculator to do times a percent, that's fine. If you don't, simply change the percent into a what? And then multiply with the decimal. Okay? All right. Now, know both ways because sometimes it'll say show your work, right? So they want to see what you did. And if you just punched it all into the calculator, that you can't show what you did, can you? But you could describe it, you could certainly describe it, yeah. Okay? All right. Okay, guys. I think what happened was, okay, so let's solve a problem. 57% of $25. So, I want to tell you that anytime you see this word, let me write it, yeah, let me write it in real words. Anytime you see the word of, it always means exactly the same thing. The word of always means to multiply. Now, everybody wants to divide when you see of. 34% of the cars in the parking lot, you want to divide for some reason. It's not. It's multiply. So, 57%. Can I multiply with a percent? No, I need to change that 57% into a decimal, so that becomes 0 0.57. What does the word of always mean? Multiply. And I write multiply using a dot. You can use an X if you want to. Do you know that they mean the same thing? No. You do now. Sorry? It's fine. They're, they're not going to look at that symbol. Yeah. Especially with you guys, because y'all are algebra students. If you wrote 0.5x like that, how do I know that's not x the variable or x the multiplication symbol, right? Yeah, they've got the weird ones that you type. But when you're writing by hand, you can, okay. Well, whatever. You, you do what you like. But you're going to see that you use the dot a lot in its, in its habit. And so it's going to be hard for me to break. But it means the same thing. All right. Sorry. Times 25. So just put that into your calculator. 0 0.57 times 25 is? 14 point what? 2.5. 2.5. 14.25. 14.25.
14.25 potatoes? Dollars. Dollars. Because you started with units. No, you can have 25. We, we're not doing, remember, we're just doing, we're doing money. We're not doing cash like you're at a store, right? So if you were doing it, if you were spending the money and, and you were paying cash, they'd have to round it because you, you don't have nickels. Times 25. And is that the money off the 25 or is that the answer? That's the answer. If they, all they want you is, they, we're not talking about discount or, or, or anything else. We're just saying take the percentage of a number. Okay? All right, guys, let's do another just, just, so, we're, just so we're okay with it. All right, then they explain it, 1455. Make sure you include the units. All right, so here's one from your homework. It's all right, we'll do it. Now, so we have 73% times that. What's another word for multiplication? This could also say the word what? Of. of. Or there can be a dot. Probably not, but yeah. 73%, can I use that? No. So it comes 0 0.73 times 279, right? And this one, they want, all they want you to do is, is write it out, I guess, no? And then they want you to perform it. Oh, select all the correct op options. So we know that's a correct option, right? Seven, 73 divided by 100, because percent means divide by 100. Oh, well, good thing we talked about that, yeah? 279 over 100? Nah, that's not right. 100 over 73 times 279? No. 0.73 times 279? You bet. So those two last ones would work. Oh, that one last one, I'm sorry, in the first one, I mean. Those two will work. Okay? All right. And since I'm writing on it, I can't check the answer for y'all, but you'll be able to do it. So know the different notations. Know the different notations. Pack up time.